Welcome back friends to the most expensive one acre pond build on the internet. Some by choice and some by chance. Our pond goals are quite unique and this is our story. Fortunately we didn't have to ship any clay in because we had it all on site and that's about the only thing we didn't have to ship in. We dug down to mine the clay for a massive dam and positioned lots of natural habitat and some various artificial habitat that we built from scratch. We strategically added rocks of all sizes adding the three ton granite rock we affectionately call Boulder Island. Every pond needs aeration if you can afford it because it balances the ecosystem and keeps the fish healthy and aids in vegetation control. We stocked 100 pounds of forage minnows and shiners before adding perch, smallmouth bass, and walleye to our 23 foot deep pond. The landscaping efforts continued to expand and we built this massive 100 foot long waterfall to generate moving water to enhance spawning and recruitment success for our walleyes. But every good story needs an antagonist and here's the leak draining our pond. But this story has a happy ending so far after much trial and error. And we're smarter now because of it and have some wisdom to share and now some fish to catch. It's a lot of work but so rewarding. Consider subscribing to follow our adventures and learn the highs and lows of pond ownership and see our vision become a reality. Guys, so on this episode, this might be exactly how not to introduce scuds to your pond. Time will only tell, but follow along. We got our shipment of scuds from Goliad, Texas. Now, the deal is I wanted Gamaris scuds, but with the, the weather the way it's been this year, so warm, they haven't been able to harvest. I went with the Hyalella as Tekka scuds. I will say Goliad Farms was super responsive, emailed me right away saying when they would be shipped and that we would get a tracking number the night before and we did and I got an email with instructions on how to care for these little guys. They said they would come in dirty water, which they are. There's about 2,000 little tiny Hyalella Azteca scuds in here. Scuds are not shrimp, they are amphipods, and they breed prolifically, but we got these primarily to see if we can get some amphipods established in our pond. Here's some, here's one right there. But these little guys perch and panfish love them. And so I'm hoping that if I can get these established in the vegetation in the pond, they'll help our fish population and they'll help the water quality. A lot of people put these in aquariums and watch them grow and they will reproduce quickly to feed their aquarium fish. Well, I got a bigger aquarium and so that is the hornwort plant, which is what the um, scuds eat off of, feed off of vegetation. They will eat live vegetation, um, but they will also eat dead vegetation. So I want these to get down in our vegetation, hide in all of the plants before they get eaten off by all the fish, and just start reproducing and eating all of the muck in our pond. The Gamaris shrimp that I really want, which I'll still, we'll still get those, but we just can't source them this winter. But look at these guys. Okay, there's one. You see that little side swimmer? That's what we're going to put in the pond and see if they can't get established. Okay, well this is going to be an experiment to clean the water and to feed our fish. All right, I wanted to get a little better video of this, so. Oh, wow, it's like super blurry. Mm, can't get that close. They're just busy eating all of the crap in here. Attach themselves to the vegetation. Just gonna mix a little bit of water in here. Start to acclimate these these guys a little bit, temperature-wise. I'm gonna end up putting these this hornwort in the pond. 
This might be a fatal error, I don't know. Hornwort is good for ponds. They does have a tendency to over, get maybe overpopulated, but um, I'll deal with that later. But for now, all of these scuds just hang out in this hornwort. And so let's see what happens. Look at all these guys. I need to slow roll that a little bit. I think they're shocked. I do have some ice. Some icebergs floating on there. there. I'm gonna set that in the water, let that acclimate, come down to temperature. Some of them were fine in there, little side swimmers. Starting to swim against the grain. How our little side swimmers are doing. Yeah, there's some in there that are all wiggling around so see if we can't transplant them now you can see these guys even on my fingers <laughs> they're just moving around on their side let's put them in the water Put some more of these guys in here. Well, either they're dead or dormant. There's another. And another, and another. I'm positive some of them are dead. Some are just frozen. This may just be a really expensive experiment that hopefully you guys, um, can learn from because that doesn't look too promising that's unfortunate maybe I could take them over where the water is warmer over here Maybe they'll come to life. Well, here goes about $250 worth. Swim free, scuds.